Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where every week I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week, because it's Maths Week Scotland, I'm going to be doing some maths art, I've got a water-based demonstration and I'm also going to be showing you how to show off that you have a big maths brain. I've teamed up with the publishers Harper Collins and Lecky this week to bring you a great competition as well, as I have fun with Fibonacci. Let's check it out. Lecky are the publishers of Primary Maths for Scotland, which is the first maths mastery scheme written specifically to raise attainment in Scotland. The books are designed all around the Scottish Curriculum for Excellence and the pages are colourful and engaging for children. They have textbooks at first level and second level and later in this video there's a chance for you to win the full range of textbooks published by Lecky. In the 12th century, there was an Italian mathematician called Leonardo of Pisa, although he's most famously known by his nickname, Fibonacci. Now, Fibonacci studied maths out in the East, and when he came back to Europe, he wrote a book in which he detailed the Fibonacci sequence, as it's now called. At that time in Europe, the Europeans were using Roman numerals as their numbers, but after Fibonacci published his book, they moved on to the Hindu Arabic number scheme, which is the same number scheme that we still use today. The Fibonacci sequence starts with a zero, which is followed by a one. To get the next number in the sequence, you just add the two numbers that came before. So you do zero add one, which gives you one, then one add one to give you two, two add one to give you three, three add two to give you five, five add three to give you eight, 8 add 5 to give you 13, 13 add 8 to give you 21, and the number sequence keeps going like that. Fibonacci noticed his sequence popping up all over the place in nature. If you look at a pine cone, for example, you see that it has swirls coming out from the middle, some going clockwise and some going anti-clockwise. It has 8 going clockwise and 13 going anti-clockwise. These are both numbers in the Fibonacci sequence and come side by side. It can also be spotted in the seeds that make up the centre part of a sunflower and can be spotted in the swirling of water as it disappears down the bath. Obviously, I don't have a bath here with me, so I'm going to do a different demonstration which shows you this swirling pattern. I've got two bottles here attached by a funnel which will allow water to pass through from one bottle to the other. If I turn the bottles over and give it a good spin and then place it down on the table, it creates a water tornado that flows up through the bottle. Now each part of the tornado gets slightly wider than the bit that came before and these grow by the same proportions that the numbers grow in the Fibonacci sequence. For the maths art, I'm going to be showing you how to make Fibonacci squares. So for this, I have some square paper and I have some coloured pencils. We're going to look at the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence for our squares, so we're going to start with the first number one. I'm going to colour in a one by one box. This means a box which is one square high and one square wide. The next number in the Fibonacci sequence is also one. So next to my first one by one box, I'm going to colour another one by one box. The next number in the Fibonacci sequence is two. So underneath my two one by one boxes, I'm going to draw a two by two box. This is a box which is two squares wide and two squares long. The next number is 3, so I'm going to move to the left of the box that I've done just now and colour in a 3x3 three three square box. Then we move on to 5, so up above these I'm going to colour in a 5x5 five five square box, so that's 5 squares high and 5 squares wide. Now to the right I'm going to colour in an 8x8 eight eight square box, I'm just moving up through the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. The number that comes after that is 13. So I'm now going to go down below what I've done so far and colour in my 13 by 13 box. So that's my 13 squares wide and 13 squares deep. And I'm going to finish off with the next one, which is the 21 squared box. So 21 squares long and 21 squares high. I'm going to colour them in to finish off my Fibonacci squares. 
Now that I've coloured all of those in, you'll see that I have a nice pattern going with my Fibonacci squares, and each square represents a different number in the Fibonacci sequence. The next thing I'm going to do is using a black marker pen, I'm going to draw a curved arc through each square and make these arcs join up. And we're going to see what sort of pattern I end up with. You'll see now that I have a spiral going through my Fibonacci squares. And this spiral looks very similar to the spiral that you will see on the pine cones, spirals that you'll see for the seeds inside the sunflower head, and also spirals that you see on various different shells, like snail shells. Next, I'm going to show you how you can look like you've got a big maths brain and impress your friends and family. So I've got my friend James with me here today to help with this maths demonstration. James, what we are going to do is I'm going to have you create a number sequence that goes up to 10 numbers on your board. Okie doke. To start with, can you just pick two numbers that are less than 30 and write them on your board with the smaller one written above the bigger one? Okie doke. I'll go for 16 and 22. Okay. Now, to get the next number in your sequence, what you're going to do is add together the two previous numbers. Okay. So to get number three, mm -hmm. just add 16 and 22 together. Okay, that gives me 38. Okay, and now I'd like you to keep doing that process until you have 10 numbers on your whiteboard. Okay. doke. Um, so next I have 60. And then I have 98. Then I have 158. And then I have 256, and uh, I have 670, um, and I have 1000. And eighty four. That's ten. Okay, now what I would like you to do is mm -hmm. add up all ten of those numbers, and I'll already have the total written on my whiteboard. Okie doke. Right, I'll definitely need the calculator for this one. Okay, I have a total. Is your total 2,816? My total is 2,816. No way. You'll have to tell me how you did that. So how was I able to get James's total written on my whiteboard before he even had 10 numbers written on his board or worked out his total on the calculator? Well, I asked James to pick two numbers that were less than 30. We'll call these numbers by letters. So we've got A and we've got B. Next, I said he had to add A and B together to get his third number. So his third number we'll call A plus B. To get his fourth number, he had to add his third number and his second number together. His third number was A plus B, and we're adding on another B, so that's the same as doing A plus 2B. We then had to do A plus 2B for the fourth number and add it on to the third number, A plus B. This gives us 2A plus 3b. Then we were adding that one on before, so it gives us 3a plus 5b. Then we add on the next one, it gives us 5a plus 8b. The next one then gives us 8a plus 13b, and then 13a plus 21b. And the tenth number is 21a plus 34b. When James is asked to add all of these together, You'll notice that if we add up all of the A's and all of the B's, it's the same as doing 55A plus 88B. The trick I used was to multiply James's seventh number by 11, because you'll notice that the seventh number is 5A plus 8B. And if we multiply that by 11, it's the same as doing 55A plus 88B. 
there is a quick way as well to do 11 times any number. We start by doing 10 times that number. So James's seventh number was 256. When you do 256 times 10, that's just the same as adding a zero on to the number that you started with. So that gives us 2,560. Because I was multiplying by 11, the next step is I need to add on one more set of 256. So I do 2,560 plus 256. So that gave me my total of 2,816, which was the same total James got when he eventually got it all worked out on his calculator. And now it's time for the competition, where you can win a complete set of the Primary Maths for Scotland textbooks published by Leckie, as they are seen pictured here. To win this prize, all you have to do is answer some questions about a famous Scottish mathematician that have been taken from one of the Primary Maths for Scotland textbooks. This famous mathematician is John Napier. The questions I would like you to find the answers to are What was John Napier's date of birth? Where in Scotland was he from? And what is he famous for? You will need to email your answers to stemwithmrn at outlook.com by 5pm on Monday the 5th of October to be in with a chance of winning. And the winner will be announced in next week's video. Your teachers can email these to me on your behalf if you give them your answers and they can take a picture of them and send them to that email address, which again is stemwithmrn at outlook.com. So the questions you need to find the answers to are what was John Napier's date of birth? Where in Scotland was he from? And what is he famous for? Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations that I've done so far. This has been STEM with Mr. N, having fun with Fibonacci.